All right, now we're going to switch gears. We are, you know, occasionally a business show. So joining me now is a very, very, very bright young man named Vivek Ramaswamy, who is a frequent guest on the show. And it just so happens he's put his hat in the ring for the 2024 GOP presidential candidate. He's the co-founder of Strive Asset Management. He's the author of Nation of Victims, Identity Politics, The Death of Merit and the Path Back to Excellence. And he's speaking to a sellout crowd tonight at the... Um, Committee to Unleash Prosperity Dinner, which I, by the way, am emceeing. Vivek, thank you for doing this. Let's just start. Um, you know, here's Biden out there today again uh, with his phony Bidenomics, the middle out, the bottom up. The whole thing has failed. You have, and I've heard you uh, on this show and elsewhere, you have a much better Unleash Prosperity program. Give us a hint. Look, I think that there's debates between Democrats like Biden who want to increase taxes and Republicans about what spending cuts we need to make. I think the first thing we need to focus on is something else altogether, mm. economic growth. Yes. GDP yes. growth in the country. Yes. It's almost as though we've given up on it. I don't. Drill, frack, burn coal, embrace nuclear, unlock American energy. That's the first element. Second element, put people back to work mm. by stopping them to pay them to stay at home. That's mm. what we're doing at scale, don't, people, don't pay people to stay at home. Mm -hmm. The top obstacle for every business in this country right now to grow is finding employees to staff open positions. Mm. Fix that. A topic you and I have talked about a lot is reform the U.S. Fed. Mm -hmm. I favor a I single know. mandate, yeah, yeah, yeah. dollar stability. We've talked about that one. Very important. That contributes to GDP growth as well. Can we roll back in, in your platform? I'm sure you're yep. there. You know, these new regulations... This guy's the most anti-business president since FDR 85 years ago. This is, Steve Forbes calls it modern socialism through the regulatory state. Absolutely. I was actually just, we're, we're talking cut to from Steve similar Forbes. cloths. Yes. Exactly. Right. So the bottom line is the top wet blanket on the U.S. economy comes from that regulatory state. Mm -hmm. We have an opportunity. The next president has, has an opportunity to roll that back because West Virginia versus EPA mm -hmm. It's probably the most important Supreme Court mm -hmm. case of the last year, mm -hmm. declared many of those EPA regulations unconstitutional. But if those are unconstitutional, I think most federal regulations passed by the administrative state are also unconstitutional. So let's make a run at it. I Absolutely. Mean, that's a great idea. That's exactly let's what I'm doing. The whole bloody thing. Shut down the administrative state. If there's one thing I do domestically, if I'm leaving office in January 2033 and I'm telling the American people, what did we do? We will again have three branches of government in this country, not four. Shut down the administrative state, and that is the key to getting us back to four plus percent GDP growth, which I believe is possible in our country. Which I have preached for four decades. I know you have. But anyway, uh, let me go. Shutting down the administrative state. Yeah. So therefore, we have to end the tenure for all those career civil servants, bureaucrats who have moved left, left, and left. Once upon a time, they might have been honest. Those times have passed. Is there a way we can go after this? I mean, these guys are not tenured. I don't even like tenured faculty members, <laughs> but I sure don't like tenured civil servants. And I say this from my own experience yes. in government. Can we do something about that? We can. And Republican presidents have not used the law effectively enough. Take 5 U.S.C. 3302. It's a law that gives the U.S.C. 3302. Uh, US gives the U.S. president, right. exactly the authority to set the guidelines and the regulations mm -hmm. for the Office of Personnel Management, mm -hmm. OPM, mm -hmm. as you know, the HR Department mm -hmm. of the federal government. Mm -hmm. Presidents haven't used this. I think that that actually allows us to say, for example, for many of those positions, if you've been there for too long and you're not doing a good job, you're going to find your way out. Also frequently misunderstood, Larry, is that the civil service protections, they protect against individual firings. They don't apply to mass layoffs. Mm. Mass layoffs oh. only require 60 day notice. And so oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not boasting on this, Larry, but I'll tell you this. I think of the presidential candidates who've run in the last 30 years. Mm. I think I have the single best understanding of how to actually lawfully shut down the administrative state. Mm. That's something that I intend to do as the next president. You know, who it's really, also how we unleash the economy. You know who really likes you? Who's that? My former boss, Donald Trump. Yeah, well, you know what? We he have a really mutual respect you. for each other. And he said a lot of good things about you. I just want to say we got less than a minute. He just put out a position paper. I want to bring it to your attention. Okay. He wants to restore budget impoundment.
This was an old law. Nixon lost it because of Watergate. Uh, Reagan tried but was beaten by the yeah. Democrats in the House, Tip O'Neill. But if you see waste, fraud, abuse, stuff being spent poorly, the executive should be able to have impoundment authority. Trump just put out a position paper on it. And I, I want to bring it to your attention. Well, it's interesting you say that because the day I launched my campaign in the op-ed I wrote in The Wall Street Journal... I said I wanted to repeal the 1974 you anti-impoundment That's act. That's it. That, that was, was the, the act. That was the day the I launched my campaign. The so-called budget reform act has <laughs> ruined the budget for the past 40 years. February of this year when I launched the campaign, that's what I said we would do. But Whoa. the good news is I actually think the impoundment prevention act is unconstitutional. So if Congress doesn't want to repeal it, I will act that's accordingly as the executive. So we'll talk some more. We're going to see you with the Committee to Unleash Prosperity dinner tonight. Looking forward to it. Well done. Today. We'll see you really. there. Well done. Thank All you, right. Larry. Quick break. We're going to ask Congresswoman Claudia Tenney how we can claw back a heist of billions in pandemic relief. Speaking of impoundment, oh my God, they're throwing our socks off. Stick with Kudlow. We still have a lot more to do. I'm Kudlow. We'll be right back. We want to unleash prosperity.